Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing this morning and then it is posted to our website for you to watch uh, at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our recordings. Both the live show and the archived recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think may be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission, we provide uh, services and to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find uh, shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries. Um, public k-12 academic museums corrections uh, archives anything and everything really it just runs the gamut uh, we do book reviews interviews mini training sessions um, demos of services and products uh, you just never know what you find on the show uh, we have nebraska library commission staff that uh, do some presentations for us on uh, services or resources or, or resources or things we're offering through the Library Commission. But we also have um, bringing guest speakers, um, as we have today. And today we have um, a team, a group, I don't know what you guys call yourself, <laughs> from the University of Nebraska, um, uh, Brett Bieber and Neil Brown and Ben Nelson, to talk to us about this uh, Connected Nebraska, which I think is really an awesome uh, Thing that libraries need to jump onto to help our uh, students get better connected and be on the internet. So um, I'm just going to hand over to you guys and I think Brett, starting with you, um, to uh, take it away and tell us all about Connect Ed Nebraska. Absolutely. Thank you, Krista, and thanks for having us today. Um, mm -hmm. Krista mentioned that I'm with the University of Nebraska and I'll introduce myself, but we also have some colleagues with us. Uh, Neil Brown, who's also with the University of Nebraska, and Ben, ben Nelson, who's uh, with the state who is a project manager for this project that we're gonna introduce to you all today called Connected Nebraska. So uh, great to be with you all and uh, we'll jump right in. So first uh, I'll give you a little intro of myself. Um, I've been with the University of Nebraska about 16 years, mainly in the uh, IT space and uh, in particular identity, federated identity and allowing users to log in and uh, access services. Um, I guess that's kind of how I got tied into this. Uh, the university is a participant in a, a program that um, uh, called Edgerome that we're going to be talking about today. Um, but it's it's great to be here and it's great to be with you all. Uh, spent a lot of time with the university and and worked a little bit with their libraries there, especially with some folks. Uh, I'm kind of an amateur uh, genealogist, so uh, mm -hmm. I have some fun there. But <clears throat> anyways, uh, that's enough about me. I want to give you all a little bit of background around um, just to set kind of the stage uh, of of why this program, why this project is so important. And so just to give you a little bit of data here, 37% um, of rural Nebraskans do not have access to high-speed internet. And that's from the Nebraska Rural Broadband Task Force. Mm -hmm. We also have 42% of Nebraska students that are on free or reduced lunch. So um, those that are living below the poverty line, uh, and also affordability, of course, impacts whether or not someone can pay for having internet access at their home. That's from the Department of Education. And then also this, from the FCC, 12% of Nebraskans under the age of 18, so our, our primary students there, do not have access to a reliable internet connection at home. So in the beginning of uh, 2020, in the beginning of the pandemic, the Department of Education sent out a survey to parents, administrators, et cetera, to the state. And they asked them, what, what's the top need? Uh, and I, they were hoping to get some information on where they should spend some of the CARES Act funding uh, mm -hmm. that they were going to receive. And the, response, the responses that were provided to the survey identified that the top need was enhancing technology infrastructure, e.g. broadband, for students and families. So that was identified as the top need. In that same survey, they had a, a number of comments that came in, but these ones I think were speak directly to what we're talking about today. The, the first one here, internet access is key from Michelle. 
The next one from Tracy, I am devastated I can't be a teacher right now. Also, when directing us to do online teaching, realize outside the big cities, students do not have access to quality internet. We have students who stay after school and do online homework before going home. We have others who go to local gas stations that offer free Wi-Fi to do their homework. That isn't going to work. And then this one from a teacher, I do not have internet service, nor can I afford it. I am a first grade teacher. What do you suggest? So are these comments specifically from Nebraska or just from the whole nationwide survey? This is from Nebraska, the Department of Education. This is the Nebraska Department of Education who ah, okay. sent out this survey. So these are our, um, these, these are folks from across the our state people. of Nebraska. Yeah. 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 So some of you may have seen uh, a press release that was announced in, in July of this year. And this was really our big splash where we announced the program and uh, our project and what we what we want to work on uh, over the next few years. And it's called Connected Nebraska. And um, the, the, high, the headline here says Connected Nebraska offers free wireless internet to Nebraska schools. And that's the, really the, the big splash um, that we announced at the end of July. And we timed this for uh, the annual conference that the Department of Education and the uh, uh, NCSA, they, they host a uh, annual conference for school administrators in Kearney and uh, this was timed so that we could announce the program and then be there to present to superintendents and uh, technical directors at all of the ESUs across the state about what the program is. So what the program is is it's called Connected Nebraska and it's uh, simple, secure, easy to use Wi-Fi powered by Edgerome and we're going to walk through what this is and what it means for our K-12 through students and also how libraries can participate. I want to give you a little bit more information around who who actually is is promoting this because I think there's some people that are suspicious of this uh, that this is a commercial entity or we're trying to to sell you something. Uh, this is not. Uh, this is a, a collaboration between the Department of Education, the State of Nebraska Office of the CIO, the University of Nebraska, and the ESUCC. So um, if you're not familiar with that, that's the Educational Service Un Unit uh, coordinating. Um, Commission, and they they work together to coordinate how IT is delivered to uh, K through 12 schools. Uh, but we have a number of partners here, all um, supporting this mission. And in case you aren't aware, Network Nebraska is this backbone that connects um, nearly all of the K through 12 schools, and in fact, some of the libraries across this across the state as well, um, with their internet connectivity. Uh, with all this collaboration and and coordination. We're able to offer really discounted rates on internet connectivity and um, help help schools get connected. This project is um, really, I think, going to be one of the most visible um, to the actual students. This this project has the potential to be the most visible um, delivery of what Network Nebraska has provided for many many years, which is that fiber internet connectivity backbone for the state. So that's a little that's bit of background. Just like in the, the behind the scenes that, you know, the students and sometimes maybe even the teachers and definitely the families don't have a clue how it all, who does it, but they just know it works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that, um, that's, that's good when it's working <laughs> and bad when it's not. Uh, but um, it, it should be, you know, it is, it is one of those foundational technologies that is so important and delivers that uh, internet connectivity to so many of the K through 12s across the state. So, um, so why do we want a little bit more about why, why do we want to have this project? What does it help do? Um, we want to allow for equity of access. So regardless of a student um, uh, or their family's financial status, we want to make sure that they have access to the internet. We also want to provide an improved user experience, and by that, I think you'll see there's a lot of potential with this to improve user experience with how users connect to Wi-Fi. And also, we want to leverage the existing investments that we have. So libraries, uh, the K-12 through schools, these are places where we've invested in internet connectivity, and we can leverage them uh, to deliver a lot more connectivity uh, if we can make it easier for students and staff to all access this. And also, we want to improve security. So, um, uh, one of those comments from, I think it was Tracy who provided that comment saying that uh, students have to go to public wireless uh, 
at mm -hmm. gas stations, at other locations, and many times those are open, free Wi-Fi networks where anyone can can snoop on your traffic. Um, the program and the project that we're talking about would be a secure wireless uh, offering. So uh, just to tell you about how the university got involved in this, I want to. It starts a little bit with um, um, when the University of Nebraska Lincoln, when the Huskers uh, joined the Big Ten, and this is kind of our our own personal story about how we got involved with uh, what's called Edgerome and known across higher ed as as Edgerome. So in 2010, uh, you may have seen some of these articles about the Huskers joining the Big Ten, and uh, you may you may not be aware that. While we compete on the field, there is a significant amount of collaboration that happens within the area of IT um, and other uh, and other academic uh, studies and programs. There's a lot of collaboration that happens behind the scenes amongst the Big Ten as well. And one of the examples of that is when our CIO uh, first got to go to the um, quarterly, I think they are, quarterly CIO meetings with all of the Big Ten CIOs. They usually host those on one of the campuses um, uh, within the Big Ten. And when our CIO got to go to his first one, I think it was in 2011, maybe maybe 2012, um, he was the only CIO who had to ask what the Wi-Fi password was. Everyone else in the Big Ten was a member and a participant of Edgerome and offered that service. So every other school and CIO was able to connect automatically at that host institution, but uh, Nebraska, our CIO, wasn't able to connect because we weren't participating yet. So you can bet the first, uh, one of the things that uh, he had, a project for us when he came back in 2012 was uh, to get the University of Nebraska as a participant in Edgerome, and we've been a member since 2012, uh, and we, we broadcast this technology across all of the University of Nebraska campuses so any student that gets connected can connect to uh, whether they're at Kearney, Lincoln, Omaha, or the Med Center. Once they get connected to Edgerome, they can travel and access the internet at any of our of our schools and also other locations across the Big Ten and across the country. So what am I what am I really talking about here? Literally, this is this is what it is. Here's some screenshots from my from my cell phone. And when I go to access the Wi-Fi networks, I see something called Edgerome. And for my username, I put in my uh, email address that is associated with a member of Edgerome. And here, the, the Nebraska.edu, we're a member of this. And so I put in that and my password, and then I get connected. There's no additional software that needs to get installed on the end user's devices. Uh, this, this is a technology that's been around for a very long time. And in fact, Edgerome was invented in the Netherlands and uh, it, it was in 2002, I believe. So this has been around for a, for a very long time and actually really popular in Europe. It's just in the United States uh, that, we're, that we're just now beginning to see a lot uh, more broader adoption and also moving into the K through 12 space. So, so there are some- It recognizes you based on your, the email, the nebraska.edu part. Yeah, exactly. So that is what helps the um, authentication servers identify where your home institution is mm -hmm. and all of your communi the communication about your password is securely transmitted all the way back to your home institution to verify that you are uh, authentic an authenticated user and then you get connected. And typically you only have to do this once. You set this up once and then when your device comes within uh, the broadcast range of a participating uh, site that's broadcasting Edgerome, you just connect automatically and you don't have to do this ever again. So you don't even have to enter your password that's saved on the other. That's you know, right. It's it's that's, saved that's in awesome. your device. Yeah, it's saved in your device. So there are some benefits for our ad administrators of, of the K through 12 schools and also of the, the participants. Uh, you've got one solution. I was, I was talking to the technical director for uh, ESU 6, and he has three schools that he supports, um, Milford, uh, Malcolm, and, and all of those schools decided to use MPS, M uh, as in Mary, MPS as their Wi-Fi. Well, when one uh, teacher goes from Milford to Malcolm, 
they see the same network, but they can't connect. So if they've had to uh, work around that and tell people, well, forget your network and, and then reconnect again, um, this is one solution. So if they broadcast Edgerome at all of those sites, because it uses your uh, domain name for your email as your home institution, uh, it allows us to have one solution that can accept uh, users from all across the country or across the globe. So it's easier. reliable and scalable. And, and when I say scale, I mean serious scale. Uh, this is this is operating at, at uh, within all of the, um, of course, I mentioned already the Big Ten institutions, but there's a, no, a significant number of higher ed institutions across the U.S. and it's very uh, broadly deployed across Europe. If you go inside uh, airports, mm -hmm. museums, uh, libraries, and all those other host institutions, um, uh, they're, they're using this and they're broadcasting it in many different locations. Uh, in fact, uh, Cape Town, South Africa, this is part of their municipal Wi-Fi. They broadcast Edgerum. So it's a, a simple way to uh, get folks connected. You've got the reliable, you've got scalable, a scalable solution here. Um, it, if you're sending users out and you want them to connect, uh, many times you might have to send them out with a hotspot or something like that, which um, costs extra money. Mm -hmm. This can save them time for configuring and, and getting their configured devices configured once. And also they don't have to use their hotspots if they don't have to. And this is that concept of, of your home wherever you roam. So if you're having a professional development event, you're bringing in a lot of um, teachers or students, uh, travel to conference sites, a great example of this was at the UNIS Conference Center in Kearney. Uh, when we went there for the Administrator's Days uh, conference, we worked with uh, Dan Eunice, and he was able to turn on Edge of Rome with their existing infrastructure and broadcast it at the, at the hotel conference site. And uh, everyone that was from a participating institution could automatically get connected at the, at the UNIS uh, Conference Center. They didn't have to ask for any username or password. They just automatically got connected. So it can really help uh, improve with connectivity and, and simplify the access there. For the students, it's seamless. You, you set it up once and then you can connect at all these other sites. Uh, connect anytime. You've got that continuity of access. Uh, and I'll show an example here from Utah uh, where they have this deployed through a number of K-12s, uh, how that continuity is, is achieved at, at one of the institutions, one of the schools that are there. And it, it's... It's this home wherever you roam concept, uh, whether they're at school, whether they travel for athletic events, uh, and potentially if we can get libraries and museums to broadcast as well, continue that connectivity at all of these sites as well. So I'll share right now um, our early adopters. Uh, and these are folks that have signed on already. As I mentioned, we kind of made our big splash in July. And so these are folks that have either uh, participated with us, uh, have helped us uh, begin some of the initial discussions, and now have uh, signed on. We've got 31 locations across the state, 31 K through 12s in all of these different communities here uh, and ESUs that are uh, actively working on deploying this. Um, so this is our, our current map of our early adopters where we have 31 within uh, the K through 12 space. But the potential is pretty incredible when you start thinking about what this could mean if we could re if we were able to deploy this across the entire state. So oh, yeah. this would be a map of Edgerome at all, just the high schools, if we were able to get this broadcast at every one of the high schools across the state. If you include the public libraries, we have a number of those sites here as well that could offer this seamless connectivity for students. Now I mentioned before that this isn't this isn't something that's just for Nebraska. This is already an existing program that's rolled out across the entire United States. These are all of the existing sites that are broadcasting Edgerome right now for students. Uh, many of these are higher ed institutions that have already signed on. It, it started in higher ed. We have a lot of uh, collaboration between research collaborators. So if you're a if you're a high level uh, uh, an institution that has a high level of research, this is one of the first things that you're going to be needing to set up is Edgerome so that all of your research collaborators can come in and get connected without, without any issues. I'll dive right in here to Utah uh, because this is an example of where they've started rolling this out at K-12s. 
Utah started this. Uh, this is the Alpine School District, and there's a significant number of schools um, that already have it deployed within the state of Utah. This was the pilot to bring um, what we have within the higher education into K through 12 space. And Utah has been uh, doing a, a fantastic job at deploying this within their K through 12s. Nebraska, Nebraska actually had to write up a proposal. So we worked together with the ESUCC, the uh, state of Nebraska, the University of Nebraska, and, and all those folks to write a proposal for Nebraska to be one of the next states to roll this out. And against 19 other um, states that wrote proposals, Nebraska was selected along with Arizona to roll this out uh, to our K through 12s. So we've okay. got really three states right now that are currently rolling this out to K through 12s, uh, Utah, Nebraska, and Arizona. And we're coming up uh, towards the end of the year. This is a um, annual, um, uh, proposal process. So the next round of states are going to be coming in. So I don't know who who will be next uh, from the states, but uh, they had 19 proposals last time. Two were selected. I'm just, I'm, I, I believe we're going to have a lot more states interested in this as we continue to roll this out. So um, those open rural areas like us, like Nebraska, that don't have that broadband availability, um, I bet they're going to be the ones jumping on this first, just like we did, I'm sure. Yeah, well, and, and leverage those existing investments where we have great connectivity, fiber internet to uh, libraries or K through 12s, where we've already made those investment investments. Let's make it easier for students to connect. So I've got a video here. Uh, we'll see if the audio comes through well. That this is a video from that Utah produced about a rollout, uh, and this is one of their superintendents speaking here. Okay. Here. You can just go and it just connects and it works. Students choose EduRome when they travel to visiting schools. For example, when students are in our buildings, they obviously have connectivity. Then we put them on a bus and we have connectivity on our buses as we travel students to visiting school. When they step off the buses, then they go into those other buildings and they can connect to those uh, internet connections through EduRome. Outdoor access points, so that way anyone that can come can connect and, and enjoy its benefits. A seamless opportunity for me to just connect. I don't even know that it's really happening. It's just that I always have Wi-Fi. Just use the edge room wherever I travel and know that I'm going to be able to have connectivity. They just show up, it connects, it works, and they don't have anything to worry about. It's a seamless transition for our students to stay connected no matter where they're at. So that was Ben Dalton, the superintendent at the Keene School District in Utah, talking about how they've been able to deploy this and really some exciting opportunities. When you think about that seamless connectivity, students connect at their home school, they get on the bus, the bus is broadcasting at Jerome, so they don't lose connectivity there. They'd ride on the bus to wherever they're traveling, uh, a visiting, they're visiting another school for an athletic event or a competition or something like that. They step off the bus and then they can connect to Edgerome at that host institution without having to ask, well, what's the Wi-Fi password? How do I get connected here? That's that seamless connectivity that can, can really benefit and give all that e equity of access. Let me show you also, I mentioned that this, is, this isn't just the United States. Uh, Edgerome is deployed in I think 106 territories across the globe. Um, heavily in Europe and if you download an app there's an app called the Edge Roam Companion that you can get on your mobile device and you can just sort of look around there look around the globe and see all of the locations across the globe that are already broadcasting Edge Roam. Um, the United States is uh, kind of playing catch up here uh, in Europe especially with Europe because they have they have this uh, delivered uh, in so many different places. So if you think about the potential here, <clears throat> and I want to highlight the alliance in particular. This is um, this is where my my mother was from, and uh, uh, would love traveling out here. Have a, uh, some friends from Alliance too. Um, this was this is what it could be if we were able to get Edgerome Broadcasting at all of these sites here: the Early Childhood Education Center, both the elementaries, the middle school and the high school, the public library, the the Knight Museum. Frontier Town, Box Butte County Extension Office, all of these places already have investments in 
connectivity. If we can make it more seamless for those students to access anywhere they're learning, so whether it's a, a 4-H uh, uh, event at the county extension office, or it's at the museum, or it's at the library, or it's at the school, they would have that seamless connectivity. So the vision here is you hand a student a device, whether it's a Chromebook or some other device that is connected to Edgerome, and, and you've got it set up at their home institution, they can take that device and they can connect across across the state of Nebraska, across the globe, anywhere they're learning and get connected. So our current stats, uh, just to let you know, where are we at with our rollout? We have right now 11% of our school districts in the state that have uh, signed on and have started uh, their, their rollout. 25 districts in nine different ESUs. If you aren't familiar with that term, that's the educational service unit. And that's typically how um, technology is supported across the state. It's uh, They're grouped into uh, 19 different ESUs that support uh, a region of the state for technology in K through 12s. 30% of the ESU offices are, are also working on this or have it already broadcasted within their within their um, ESU administration office. There are 52 sites across uh, uh, the state that are broadcasting Edgerome, and right now we've got uh, 21 participation agreements signed and uh, seven agreements that are in progress. The agreements are very simple. Um, if you're a, from a library that wants to sign on, the, the service provider, just to broadcast this, the, the agreement is very simple. The administrator signs it, that goes to the CIO of the state of Nebraska, Ed Toner, and he signs it, and it's a very simple setup. All we're talking about here is configuration of uh, usually what, what is your existing wireless infrastructure. The existing infrastructure you have that's broadcasting your wireless network, you just mm -hmm. add in Edgerome as another um, uh, SSID, and that's what we're talking about here. So for the 52 it's sites, all software. That are, it's all software, not hardware. There's no equipment, no special that's equipment. Right. Anybody that's else. right. And, and usually so all, all that, that you've done on that previous slide there, that's just since July when you first announced it. Yeah, we've had a few uh, that were that were working closely with us um, uh, before we announced. Mm -hmm. But I, we've had a significant number of these that have signed up just within the last few weeks. Um, that's awesome. Uh, Monday I'm this week. Just jump in real quick. You need to do uh, it. So. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Ben. We've had three additional uh, sign-ins just this week, so we're, we're at 20, I think 24 now, uh, agreements. 24 agreements. Take your slides. <laughs> yeah, so we're making really good progress, and and uh, thank you, Ben, for jumping in there. Ben is a uh, our project manager, and he's the one who who also helps with a lot of the uh, back-end work here. Um, he's really uh, keeping everything on on track here with us. Um, but I, I, this map that I have here um, shows our 52 sites across Nebraska that are currently broadcasting Edgerome, um, and there's 12 in Lincoln. And I want to highlight uh, a little bit about what, what we're doing in Lincoln because I think it's a very interesting opportunity uh, with, uh, with an ISP that has some connections to Nebraska. So oh. within, within the city of Lincoln, uh, Allo has decided to broadcast Edgerome at 10 sites across the city of Lincoln. And they selected a, a number of sites that they thought had kind of a connection to the community to pilot this. Uh, allo has been a great partner. They've been interested in figuring out a way to help education. And this is one way that they thought uh, that kind of aligned with their mission of trying to deliver um, uh, connectivity and help out uh, education. So they decided to... Um, identify 10 nonprofits in the city of Lincoln to try this out and see how this would work. And so the, the locations across Lincoln are the Barnabas Community Center, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Boys and Girls Clubs of Lincoln, Lancaster County, Civic, ne Civic Nebraska, uh, the Clyde Malone Community Center, Good Neighbor Community Center, Matt Talbot Kitchen and Outreach, the People's City Mission, uh, Willard Community Center, and then they have it of a, at a couple of other locations, uh, the mill, uh, also known as the bay, which is a skate park, um, indoor skate park. And they have it at their their offices, the Allo building in the Telegraph District. So they were able to broadcast Edgerome um, starting, I think, in July, uh, the middle of July, they were able to get it up and running. And they received uh, the first report. And the first report uh, gave them 
a summary of where all the visitors were coming from and how many people connected to those uh, nonprofit locations where they're broadcasting Edgerome. So in that first um, partial month of July, they saw 22,000 connections, and those were people that had seamless connectivity, brought in their device, and automatically connected at one of those um, nonprofits across the city of Lincoln. So whether it was the, the city mission uh, or one of the, you know, the, the soup kitchen, any of those places, those, those users, those students would have been connected seamlessly, and they saw 22,000. So I think the wow. results exceeded their expectations. Um, so some, some good news there too. Uh, Allo's been a great partner and they're working right now with the manufacturer of their home modems, the modems, the fiber modem that they put inside residential spaces to oh, see yeah. if they get Edgerome installed on those as well. So they're, they're targeting a consumer rollout and we're going to see uh, within the fourth quarter of this year uh, testing that um, but that would give us the potential of broadcasting Edgerome and allowing a student to connect at any uh, consumer that was that wanted to participate here. So, so really, so they would have that at home. The students exactly. working at their home, if they have the Allo modem. Exactly. Yeah. So think about that in terms of a um, you know a, a urban location where you've got a, a number of folks all inside a uh, an apartment building or something like that. Uh, Edgerome, as long as they were within range of a of a site that was broadcasting it, they could get seamless connectivity there. Uh, we also have a number of other um, service providers that are just broadcasting it, and you don't have to be from a K through 12 to broadcast it. Actually, anyone can broadcast Edgerome if you want to provide that to that service to students and let uh, let students access the internet. Uh, so we've got a number of places, uh, coffee and tea shops, the Greenleaf Tea Company here in Lincoln uh, is interested. Uh, the Pizza Kitchen in Milford, um, one of the ESU technical directors, he said, you know, we're going to have a meeting with all of our superintendents uh, at the Pizza Kitchen. And we approached the owner and said, hey, could you broadcast Edgerome here? Explain what it was, got them on board, and uh, we're going to have Edgerome broadcast at the Pizza Kitchen there. So I'm going to head out there and uh, test it out as soon as we get it up and running. Um, churches can sign on if they want to broadcast this as a, you know, if they're a, a center for the community for students to, to get connected. There's a lot of opportunity here. Um, I also will mention that uh, uh, in the month of October, we're going to begin the conversations with the Omaha Metro, uh, our, our mass transit systems. So Lincoln Star Tran and Omaha Metro start the conversation around getting uh, Edgerome on the buses as well. Uh, they're already doing this within Gainesville, Florida. Um, they've they've been in conversations with their their city and making sure that the provider that they've selected for connectivity on their buses uh, can support this. And it and and it can. I think the last piece is they're working with their the cellular provider uh, that that connects those buses, to, uh, waiting for that contract to get signed. Then they'll have this uh, within Gainesville, Florida. So, uh, really exciting uh, uh, opportunity here. And we're seeing a lot of uh, uh, uptick and in, in, uh, interest. So um, if you're interested, uh, so libraries, definitely, we want to get uh, this connectivity anywhere students that are, anywhere students are learning. So uh, we have a website. The website is connectednebraska.com. And don't be scared by the .com there. We're not a commercial entity. This is all <laughs> nonprofits connectednebraska.com. There's a lot of a lot of links to the same place. So up on the top, it says, how can I get connected Nebraska? Contact us. And then there's another link, get connected, get in touch. All of those go to the same place where you submit an interest form. And that goes to uh, uh, Ben Nelson, our project manager, and he makes sure to uh, coordinate and help answer any questions. So the, the first thing to do if you're interested in this is to submit that interest form, uh, start broadcasting Edgerome uh, at, at your site. And become an ambassador, you know, uh, just like um, uh, just like Jamin Hall did, the ESU technical director for ESU six. Um, he went to the pizza kitchen and said, "Can you? Are, are you interested in this? It would be great if you could do this. Uh, become an ambassador. Uh, reach out to those locations or those sites where uh, students learn or are important to the community, just like Allo has done with those nonprofits, and uh, see if they can get signed up as well." So uh, for next steps, um, uh, and if you're interested in 
talking more, uh, here's my contact information. This is my email address. And I also have Ben Nelson's up there. Uh, uh, ben Nelson is, a, as I mentioned, the project manager for this and, and the link to our website there. And we're available to, of course, answer any questions that you all have and, and uh, continue this conversation. So with that, I don't know, uh, Krista, um, do we have any questions or can you think of anything else that we didn't cover today? Sure, yeah. Um, if anybody does, we do have a question, we do have one, um, but if anybody has any questions, go ahead and type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. I'm monitoring that here and I can grab it, grab any questions we have. Um, so everybody please go ahead and start typing in there. Um, I did just want to mention, yeah, when you're talking about libraries getting involved and, and helping the students, this is, I think, I guess it said a little while, this, I think this is like a no-brainer. Um, it's free, do it. <laughs> um, you just got to get it done. Um, our public libraries do, off, many of them struggle in the afternoons after what well, you were talking about, how this, that one um, teacher commented their students go to the gas station, um, but the public libraries, once they don't have the, the, you know, the school closes at three or four, whatever in the afternoon, there's a huge influx of students coming to the library because that's the next place where they can gather that has, that's broadcasting Wi-Fi. And, um, Many libraries struggle with providing that. Do they have enough bandwidth to, to do it? Um, it slows down everything else. And so it's definitely something. And now that's a question that someone does have too. What, how, so, and then looking at the technical side of this. So this would be a separate Wi Fi connection from the library's one that it has also, so that if the students come in and use this, then it won't slow down the one that other users may be using is that correct well that's a good question that's a good question and it also uh kind of touches on you know how would how would we roll this out uh, especially if you already have a guest wireless system you know what mm -hmm. what does this mean for that um this doesn't make more internet so uh, i'm sorry if that's a letdown it's not gonna make it's not gonna be <laughs> like, i was struggling with is the speed does they, their current bandwidth can it handle uh you know what they're what the users want and oftentimes it's fine until you get so many more people and yeah that's yeah so that yeah. that obviously is a an, an ongoing issue especially if we don't have great connectivity to to the library so one of the suggestions that i would have there and i know krista you're you're familiar with a lot of this process as well um would be to reach out to tom rolfus and talk about how you can get your your library connected to uh, network nebraska and uh, uh, increase the speeds that you have there. That would be one uh, great suggestion is um, uh, to work on getting um, uh, getting getting an upgraded connection because it, it is really important to have that connectivity there. I know a number of schools and K through 12s um, uh, also participate and and uh, support the libraries. So that may be another option as well is to work with your uh, local K through 12 or ESU to figure out a, a way to get uh, connectivity there to increase it. This project doesn't make more internet. Okay. It uh, leverages your existing connections and the investments that have already been made. You already have and, to have the speed to do that, yeah. And I, think, yeah. And I think that's the benefit, right? I mean, obviously, Brett did an excellent job presenting um, on the benefits and what, what that will mean for the students. But, you know, if you're a library person and you're watching this presentation, you know, so what, so what for me? Well, what do I get out of this? And I think part of that influx, right, of of what comes with that three o'clock rush of a massive amount of students, no longer are you trying to onboard that student's device. No longer are you trying to hand out a username password. No longer are you worried about it, you know, somebody, an open SSID that somebody's just joining automatically. That seamless connection is what is going to allow users to congregate, come to the library, participate in being able to get onto a seamless connection. And so yeah, I think that's a that huge- thing To get them connected, because it autom just connects automatically. Yes, that's a that's huge- right. With additional security yeah. as well. And additional security, you're gonna know exactly- And that's actually what another question somebody did just to. have, and I know you said earlier that it is secure, is what are the security concerns for hosting EduRoam? Are, are there, how does, you know? <laughs> and so still your home institution, any content filtering, any of the stuff that you already have in place for your home institution would still follow for whatever your current processes are. So if there are certain sites that are restricted with the library, that would still follow and still, like Brett said, it didn't make a new connection. It didn't, you know, 
all of a sudden circumvent anything or route traffic back somewhere that you're not anticipating. It's still going to follow all of your current practices and rules for your current content filtering or security um, for that for your outbound traffic. Um, but what it will get you is you won't you no longer you will get to know okay yep yeah, Neil Brown is coming from at Nebraska.edu. He is, I can definitely track that that guy is part of the University of Nebraska or the student was part of this ESU group or the student was from the school. Um, it's going to provide a little bit more insight on exactly who's connecting to your network as opposed to Joe Joe Smith that made up email.com that joined your that joined your network. Right. And that's the one you, have, you should have the security concerns about. <laughs> Okay. Um, another question um, came in. Let's see. That, I'm making sure I've got them all of them here. Um, you mentioned this is free to the libraries and schools, and so who is paying for it? Is just all of the non, all you know, the university, and you know, who's putting up the funding for this? Is that who it is? The university and the state and the CIO's office. Yeah. I'm just so that's curious about where the money's com is coming from. I mean, it's, it's not you know, it's not a commercial operation, of course, but curious. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's a good question. Um, who is, uh, first and foremost, if you're just broadcasting, there are no costs at all. If you are uh, an institution that has identities, so for us at the University of Nebraska, we have uh, nebraska.edu uh, email addresses, and we have uh, unl.edu and unomaha and lopers.unk. Uh, we've got all those different domains. To be a member of Edgerome and actually have your uh, user identities uh, routed back to your home institution for the authentication, there is a cost associated, and you pay with a membership fee, and it is um, uh, it is very minimal. And with the University of Nebraska, we've been a member of it for um, since 2012, and th there's there's it's it's not uh, expensive. And with what we've done with this contract, um, we're able to sign up uh, with Network Nebraska as the regional education network operator to get a very discounted rate on this. The Department of Education is the one who has uh, sponsored the first few years of this program. And uh, going forward, uh, there is a board of uh, Network Nebraska that is going to determine the sustainable funding for those uh, K through 12 schools that have all of their domains and they want to have all of their email addresses uh, for the authentication routed back to their home institution. Um, what we're talking about, if we spread it out over all of the Network Nebraska members, this is a very, very minimal fee. If we if we spread it out equally, I was I was thinking we were looking somewhere at the $200 range per year. If you if you look at it per learner. I think it was less than 15 cents uh, per year per learner. So uh, it's a very small fee uh, to, yeah. to be a member of this at all. Mm -hmm. And there's no costs for someone who just wants to broadcast this. Right. Such as so the schools and the libraries that want their students and um, staff to be able to access it, they pay their fee. And then the libraries just send out the signal, we'll make it available so that when those people come to the library, they can use it. And the library doesn't have, to, they're not the ones that's right. Making it happen. Yeah. Awesome. Makes sense. I think the other, and I think the other point that uh, you made that was a really great point was that, um, uh, the, the, like you said, is slam dunk. The work's already been done. Um, we've already gone through the presentation or the the uh, the process to get applied. We had the state of Nebraska get accepted, competed against 19 other states for this opportunity. Uh, yeah. We got that. Uh, then we got funding for it from the, the Nebraska Department of Education. I mean, it's kind of like we are offering this great service that um, we've kind of lined all the ducks up on already. So um, mm -hmm. that that I think is a huge testament to um, the, the support and the and where this where we think that this uh, project and effort can go. Yeah, I think it matters too that this isn't like you know we are one of the first states doing it, but as you're previous maps and explanation. This isn't a new concept. It's 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 a proven, it, it everyone knows exactly how it works. It's it's all figured out already from across the whole world already. Um, and now we just have to join as well. Yeah. And I think there were last I checked 270 
higher ed institutions that are already participating it before they started doing statewide network acceptance with Utah mm. and um, Nebraska and Arizona. Oh, so, just individual oh, universities were doing it on their own type? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah that's um, just so, in the United States. That's just in the United States uh, yeah. that I was mentioning there. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So anybody have any other questions? Go ahead and get them typed in. We still have time here this morning. Um, if you do have anything desperate you want to ask, uh, um, get typed in there. Um, I do want to mention, you did mention Tom Tom Rolfus uh, about getting connected with a Network Nebraska, and he's actually here today. He's logged hey. in uh, online with us. Hi, Tom. Um, uh, I've got you so you can unmute yourself, Tom, if you wanted to talk a little bit about Network Nebraska. Actually, you guys have been doing a superb job, so I really don't have much more to add. Um, Chris, I did uh, type in, if you may not have seen it, but to remind all of our library participants and those watching the recording that the Special Construction Matching Fund for Fiber for the first time uh, will still be in place for this yes. year and the next two years at least. Excellent opportunity for libraries to you know, improve their their broadband situation, and that'd be a great dovetail for a Jerome as well. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah, as well. I did see your chat there, Tom. I hadn't. Yeah, I had opened that up. Um, yeah, and that's what I was thinking about with talking to you about the fact that as we were talking that the libraries already have to have the fast enough internet to ho handle all the kids coming in in the afternoon and. Um, and I think you mentioned getting bread that we do have some of our public libraries that are have already joined Network Nebraska. Um, Correct. So that so. roster right now includes uh, Omaha, Lincoln, Grand Island, and Beatrice. But it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be just the larger libraries. We're yeah. ready to work with uh, medium and smaller libraries for sure and mm -hmm. can be a great support mechanism for them. Yeah, anybody who, yeah, any public libraries are interested can, you know, reach out to Tom about that. Um, but then there's the special construction um, for fiber that we are um, helping libraries to apply for. Um, and Tom and I and other staff person here at the Library Commission, Holly Wolt, is, are involved in, in that project. Uh, it's done via the E-Rate program where libraries and schools receive discounts on their internet connections. Um, and the equipment to get that internet connection. It's a federal program to get discounts. And there's this uh, special matching fund, um, a special matching program part of it, where if your state some, um, provides some assistance to get fiber run to a library or school that doesn't have it yet, um, then uh, E-Rate will help with some of that cost as well. Um, so in some cases makes the cost to run the fiber to the library nothing or only like 10% of the cost, very, very minimal. Um, we started this last year with, um, and we've got six libraries who have um, successfully applied and received the discounted funding, getting their fiber run as we speak, some of them. And um, this, the funding is through the Public Service Commission. Uh, they have a million dollars set aside for four years to um, get this fiber run out to libraries using E-rate discounted funding to run it. Uh, so uh, definitely there are, um, and I'll show you. We did a, we did a we did a recording about it. We have information on our website about it. You can reach out to me or Tom or Holly about to know more if you want. If you're a library who doesn't have fiber yet, that's the key. You have to not have a fiber connection at all, and then this can get you um, a fiber run from wherever it is in your community to the library um, at um, a very very discounted or if you're lucky free cost um, with with our help and with uh, public service commission's help. So that would get your speed up, and we we're usually getting libraries at a minimum. Um, a gig, I think, um, some more uh, very high speeds. I think we did as our minimum 100 megabits per second. I can't remember, Tom, what our requirement was, but they're getting whatever their provider will give them. So definitely getting enough speed to the libraries to be able to handle all these students coming in the afternoon, finally. <laughs> yeah, and infinitely scalable for the future. That's yeah. probably the most important part. If a library is on a DSL, or cable modem connection, there is an upper limit to that technology. So, so once fiber. they make the leap to fiber, uh, sky's the limit. And mm -hmm. so uh, we want the library to be the center of the community. And in rural areas, 
uh, putting a high bandwidth connection at the library would be an extraordinary demonstration tool for patrons that have insufficient internet at home. And then it just starts the whole conversation. But other than their cell phones, uh, many rural citizens have never ever seen or experienced extremely high bandwidth connections like we have at schools and colleges. Another item I just wanted to throw in real quick is I know we speak heavily of students because they are our main focus, but uh, every school has teachers and staff that will also be able to participate in Edge of Rome. So you're not helping just the students, but you're helping those teachers and educators and the staff uh, for the schools making their lives easier as well. Yeah, significant opportunity here for for us to leverage the existing investments or identify where we have investments and, and we could make that connectivity just seamless. The vision, I think it, it's really exciting to to kind of think about how that could really impact our state. And I think it does. I think it's got a lot of opportunity to really help a lot of students across our state. When you when you picture that in your head, you could hand a hand a laptop to a student and to be able to know that they could get connected at all of these places across the state without having to ask for what the Wi-Fi password was or go to an insecure public uh, public Wi-Fi where someone else could see their content or see what they were doing. Some really exciting opportunity there to to help um, to help students and our educators get connected. So thank you, Krista. This has been fantastic. I'm excited to share this and I'm, I'm hopeful that we can get some uh, libraries to participate in this as well. As I mentioned before, we just uh, submit the uh, contact us form. That'll go to Ben and uh, the rest of the team. We've got regular technical calls where we can answer questions. Um, uh, of course, there's a lot of different existing technologies that are installed out there. And so we, we're almost playing matchmaker. Uh, if you've got this type of uh, hardware and access points, uh, uh, here's how you can get those configured. Some are automatic, some are uh, setup guides are actually provided by the manufacturers. So Cisco, if you have Meraki um, hardware, mm -hmm. that they already provide a, how to get connected to Edgerome uh, instructions. So manufacturers are aware of this as well. It's a, it's a very broadly deployed technology. Uh, we're just hoping to get more people signed up and and helping students get connected yeah like i said i think it should be something yeah there's no no reason any library shouldn't do it just gotta reach out and get it set up so that you're broadcasting that um and yeah whatever i think that's something many of our smaller especially the smaller libraries do not have a lot of um they don't have tech support of their own <laughs> they don't have a tech guy or an it department um so i think having knowing that there's going to be instructions for whatever you use that all of you are available to guide them through hand handhold them through all that it takes to get it set up um is i think going to make a huge difference to them because <laughs> many times they hear the, about these things and even about the special fiber we're trying to get them on and most men of the fear is i don't know anything about that i don't even know what's in my network closet with all those cables and wires and things um and it's like don't worry we got people that can help you with it we will make it happen yeah you don't have to know <laughs> Yeah, and especially as we get more and more schools and more and more places that are signing on, uh, I think we'll see a lot of expertise and a lot of others that are willing to help. You know, and, and once mm -hmm. you once you experience it, um, it's pretty fantastic to be able to just go and travel and uh, just get connected seamlessly. So it'll be and fantastic. It works. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <sighs> Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Brett and Neil and Ben and Tom <laughs> for being here with us this morning and talking to us about it. You, um, connected Nebraska. Uh, I, we highly encourage all libraries reach out. Um, I'm showing here. This is the session page for today's show where we do have a link to their the connected Nebraska website. So you can go there and contact them and get connected and get in touch, whatever you need to do <laughs> uh, to reach out to them to get your library um, helping out with this. Uh, so thank you everybody for attending. The show um, is been recorded and will be available on our main website. I'm gonna pop this this same information will be with along with the recording. Um, this is our main Encompass Live page. We have our upcoming shows, but um, our archives link is right here at the bottom. 
and I do have um, Brett's slides as well. So those will be included. It'll be a link to those when we put up the recording. Um, it'll be at the top of the list here. Our most recent shows are at the top. There'll be a link to the recording on our YouTube channel and a link to the slides in our SlideShare account. So you'll have access to all of those. Uh, everybody who attended today and, regist and um, registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's ready. By the end of the day tomorrow, as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me, you should have um, a link to the recording. Um, it's And like I said at the beginning, everything is free and open to everyone, our recording. So uh, share with all of your other library colleagues, <laughs> get the word out, and schools, you know, for the schools that have not connected yet, have not joined in. Um, share the word, spread the link around to anybody who you think um, would want to, you know, should be involved in this. Uh, while we're here on our archives, Osha show, we do have a search feature here. So if you want to look through our show archives to see if we've had a, a show on any topic you might be interested in. You can search, search the whole archives or just most recent 12 months if you want just something very current. Um, that is because this is our full show archives. I'm not going to scroll all the way down because there's just too many. But you can see it's a giant page. Uh, we have our full archives going back to when Encompass Live premiered in January 2009 are all here. So um, when you are watching a recording, pay attention to the original broadcast date. Many of our shows may st will stand this test of time and still be good, valid, accurate information, um, but some things will become outdated. Uh, services and products may have changed drastically since we broadcast. Links, um, URLs may, may be broken or not work, no longer work anymore. So just pay attention when you are watching a recording of what the date is on it if you do just search here. Um, we do also have a Facebook page. I've got a link here and I've got it open over here. Um, if you like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. We remind about um, um, when we're doing shows, there's a link to log on to today's show on the fly. Little, well, here's our presenter for the day or when last week's recording is available. So if you do like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. Uh, we also use our hashtag EncompLive to blog to post onto Twitter and Instagram. So if you like to follow us over there, we do the same kind of announcements there as well. So you can keep up with what we're doing on the show. So that wraps up today. I hope you join us next week when our topic is it's pretty sweet tech day. Uh, the last Wednesday of every month, it, Amanda Sweet, who is our technology innovation librarian, comes on Encompass Live and does her pretty sweet tech session. So it's always something more techy leaning. We have other shows that are like that, but it's always going to be um, on the last Wednesday of the month. So um, next week, she'll be talking about uh, gadgets and gizmos of plenty, makerspace edition. Uh, lots of makerspace going on, people getting their makerspaces done, getting equipment. Uh, we have a grant right now that's wrapping up where we put makerspace equipment in libraries, and now some of these libraries are work, looking to figure out what do I do now, what do I buy? She's going to talk to you about so many things that you can um, do. Um, ideas and what what tools to buy, what uh, equipment. Um, we also have grants available right now from the Library Commission that you can use to purchase some of this stuff. So we'll talk about that next week as well. Um, so that wraps up today's show. Thank you everybody for being here with us this morning and I hope to see you on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye.